Good afternoon everyone, it's Kay here. Delighted to be back with you again representing Handy Hippo um, with another series which I hope everyone will take some pleasure from and enjoy. This time we are going to be dealing with card making and going into a little bit more detail and making the cards around special events, holidays, that kind of thing. So without further ado, the DT package I talked about previously is in front of you, although very much depleted, I'd like to say. And I would like to start the proceedings off with making Valentine's cards. I know in England we don't celebrate to such an extent as they do in some other countries and the cards we make really are for our nearest and dearest partners, bestest, bestest friends, what have you. Um, but I've made several cards from this pack in the hope that they could be used actually beyond the Valentine anniversary. So I'm going back to the crush card making stack that I showed previously. I am still of the opinion that this is an absolute bargain. The quality of the card is really very, very wonderful indeed. All of these cards are pre-scored. There are five, six, sorry, different designs, four cards for each design making up the 18 in total. As I said before, I'm inclined to think it's around the 240, 260 GSM mark. So it really is exceptional quality. It's one-sided, but that's all you need. And really, if I just run through it again, the, the designs are really very, very nice. They would suit a number of occasions. They would also be ideal for matting and layering in card work. You know, the, it's limitless really. It doesn't have to be restricted to the Valentine's time of year. But what I've done is put together some cards and some of them you will see are very, very basic, very straightforward and some just then take on a little bit of edginess for the more experienced crafter we'll say. This card is very basic in the extreme. It's got a little bit of embossing on the front using stamps provided by Handy Hippo. It's an American company. Uh, they're clear, they're easily to, easy to maintain and it just says you make my heart smile. I've matted and layered using mirror card a little bit of contrasting colour to the background of the card, some Anita's polka dot ribbon and these little pearl gems which are actually on a string so you can actually cut off the amount that you need. You don't have to worry about lining up the pearls because they are already lined up and just ready to be peeled off the um, backing papers or backing paper that they're mounted on for use. So that's the first card that I did and as I say it is very very basic, a great start to anyone's card making career I would say. Here is another one and I've just used on this another sheet of the designer card. I've used a scalloped edge oval I've printed another of the sayings, be happy, and I've used this little heart that's got a smiley face in it as well, but I've put a rose over the smiley face. From the cut-off part, the bottom of the card, which attaches it into the actual pad, I've made this tiny little bow and put a little gem on the inside. But I think you'll agree, as as basic as, as it is, it's, it's quite an attractive card. I don't think anyone would be too upset if they received that as a special gift. And be happy, you know, that, that covers a multitude of events, thinking of you, whatever. It, it really is a very flexible saying. The third card I made is a little bit more intricate. I've put 
Again, the oval scallop, I've used a one and three quarter, one and three quarter or one and a quarter inch round scalloped edged um, die, not die, punch, beg your pardon. And then I've put a little bit of lace around from my own stash. And you will see this, this card has got stripes of patterning on it arrows, lace, the hearts. It could actually be equally effective this way as it is on the um, on the landscape view. This is landscape, this is portrait which we talked about in the previous series. So hopefully there again that is another sweet little card. Wouldn't take too long to make easy to use that little scraps of paper you don't need oodles and oodles of things beyond the basic card stock to come up with something that's really quite effective and then the fourth card I made is a, a step up again in my opinion I've stuck to the scalloped punch because it is very very effective it meets all the sizings on all of the stamps I've used the Anita's Ribbon, another of the roses provided in the DT package and these three little pearls, top and bottom of the card. I've snuck in there a little bit of mirror card because I do like it. I think it just adds an extra edge to the look of the card and used the pink and blue from the American card stock which match up beautifully with the pink and blue that is already in the design card pack and I just love that one so I thought as something that I would show you how to do very simply this would be a nice place to start I'm altering it a little bit insofar as I'm using the embossing powder on the next one I've removed the uh, mirror card and I'm replacing it with the pink and black all in keeping with the colours in this particular set. It will alter the card, not significantly, but it would be another card within a series if you like. So we'll pop those there, I'm hoping you can see them all. I don't know if, if many of you are keen embossers, it is something that is quite easy to do when you know what it is you're doing and again it's dependent upon the products that you use. Some embossing powders are very very good, others aren't so good. It also comes down to the medium that you use to anchor the embossing powder for stamping. So here is a little essential pack. I'm just going to run through very briefly how to get the best out of your um, embossing medium. I always keep off cuts from cards that I'm doing. I've got quite an array here. Um, I've cut down bits and pieces of card. I never ever throw these away because they're ideal for this kind of project where you want to be able to stamp out a sentiment and move along to emboss it. So here I've got the Versamark water, watermark stamp pad. These pads are readily available on Handy Hippo. There are alternatives that you might like to try but from experience this is the one that I opt for personally. I've already loaded my stamp onto an acrylic block. All of the things that I'm showing you today are available on the Handy Hippo site so please don't feel that you have to run around like a headless chicken should you want to have a, um, a card making experience with what I'm showing you today then everything can be found on Handy Hippo. So I've mounted my stamp onto the acrylic block. I am then going to load the stamp with this glue pad and it is quite a new pad as the pads get used they are not as effective as they might be there are in some instances refills available for them but it is down to what you choose to use i'm now going to place it 
in the middle roughly of the card and just press down to make sure that the image is securely stamped onto that piece of card because there was a little bit of black ink on the stamp by design I'm showing you where the glue has landed on the piece of card that I'm using normally you wouldn't see that I've done it so that you can see what I'm talking about I'm now going to sprinkle the wow embossing powder over the area that's got the glue stamped on it and I'm going to lift and just tap away the excess so already you're able to see the stamp in all its glory at this point it's very important not to smudge or try and dust off anything you're better just to tap the card like so let the excess fall away and you will then be left with a much sharper image I then get my heating gun which I keep away from the embossing powder on the paper there because it will alter quite rapidly and to start with I always start my heating process under the paper now this is going to be noisy but what I aim to do is put the heat gun under the design and then you'll watch me as I turn it around and hopefully you will see the embossing powder change colour in the process. So excuse the noise, here we go. It is, as I say, quite noisy. I'm trying to um, make it so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. to remember when you're embossing namely to keep the heat gun moving around because it will singe the paper and also not to put it too close to your work this has actually changed color there's a little bit of sheen to the embossing now and I don't know whether the camera will pick it up I'm very very doubtful but it is raised from the paper and as you can see a really lovely clear image for everyone to see and that is the basic principle of embossing whether it be a sentiment or a flower whatever you choose to do glue pad heat gun embossing powder on and make sure that you keep that glue gun moving around and not too close close to the card or paper that you're embossing because it will singe. So I'll move that out of the way in the hope that you're understanding the principle of the embossing. If there are any questions, if you have anything that you would like to, me to go through again, then please don't hesitate to leave a message underneath the video or at Handy Hippo and they will pass it on and we will deal with whatever it is you're not quite sure about but I can now brush this off tap it and it's not going anywhere it is firmly affixed to the paper now for the card that I'm showing I'm going to show you how to make I've taken another sheet of this particular design out of the pad I've scored it along the line that is pre-scored for use and you will see there is this excess and that is just to allow you to take the card safely out of the glued pad to use. So I'm going to get my guillotine cutter and I'm going to pop this into the machine and I'm going to line up the edge of the card with the edge of the cutting site and I've just trimmed off the excess so I now have my C6 approximately card to work with it's up to you again whether you use it in the 
portrait or in the landscape um, view. I quite like to use it at, in this la uh, portrait style because it does give you a little bit of freedom once you start applying all your little bits and pieces to the front of the card. I previously cut out the three pieces of American card stock. These are 12 by 12 sheets, excellent, excellent value at 35 pence and the card stock is just so forgiving. It lets you cut, it lets you rip. I've used this to punch out what I need to put on the front of the card. Now all I'm going to do, very simply, I've already embossed and you'll see the embossing powder is taken up the colour of the blue card so that then becomes a purple colour as opposed to the bright bright pink in on the white and I am going to layer these up first of all I want to line them up like so and it is really roughly speaking about the 50-50 mark if you overlap the two ovals and I've got my Kalal glue again available on Handy Hippo this in my opinion for card makers is excellent it allows you movement it's a contact adhesive so you're not in any great rush to use up the product and place what you want onto your card it does give you that little bit of time to maneuver things around it is quite tacky it's got quite a strong smell but it's not offensive it's not like um, some of the silicone smells used to be so I've just put those two on top of one another and you'll see it's coming together now this one with the sentiment on it the very top layer I am going to put in the middle and I'm going to try and get equal amounts this happens very very simply I want to try and get equal amounts of the black and the pink card showing and then that marries up the background of the card beautifully I think you'll agree what I will then do is put more Kalal on the two base layers the pink and the black in this instance I'm not shy with the Kalal glue it, it needs a little bit of running time so the thicker you have it the more time you have and if you watch what I'm doing here I'm just moving it around on the base of the card and what that does very effectively is anchors it to the card that you are placing it onto and that then starts to settle in its own sweet way if you get it on your fingers you just roll the glue up and discard it it's not something that will stick around and mean that you have to go rushing off to the bathroom to wash your hands every time you use it it's it's really very well thought out in my opinion I then will get my little pearls that I spoke about earlier and if I can find my scissors Oh, well, you always find something that goes amissing when you're trying to look organised. Um, Harry, could you please? Got no idea. They're right in the room. I'm just going to use three of these little pearls. Three at the bottom there, in the corner. I've not rounded these corners like I did on those. It's not essential. It does give sometimes thank you it gives a better effect a more finished effect but it is not essential to do the rounded corner bit unless you feel the need to it just adds another dimension to your card these slot on very very easily as I hope you saw so that's them coming together quite beautifully I've then got my Anita's ribbon here and I do a very basic you get your bunny rabbit ears I don't cut off any ribbon until my bow is made you fold them as if you were tying uh, laces very very simply holding on to the ends of the ribbon and 
just fold it and manoeuvre it until you get the shape of the ribbon that you or bow that you're looking for. I want something that's not got too big an area because the card itself isn't very big. I don't mind the fact that the black background of the ribbon is actually in the tied bit of the bow because like the card previously I am planning to put a rose onto that little piece of ribbon. I then take the bow, fold the tail of the ribbon in half and with the folded side away from you I cut at an angle and that gives this rather lovely um, peak, I don't know what you call it. Swallowtail. Sorry? Swallowtail. Swallowtail, the film crew tells me, thank you. Swallowtail effect to the ends of the ribbon. If you don't want to do that, obviously, you can cut it any which way that suits you, but I think that's quite effective. And I will just pop that there, like so, and you'll see it's all just coming together really nicely. I've got my hot glue gun poised and ready. I should just pop a little bit of glue on the back here, if it will come out. Just enough to anchor and no more. You don't want to inundate your card with glue strands because they do go everywhere. They're easy to remove, but it's just, you know, the fussiness of having to then go back and sort it all out. I've then taken one of the little paper roses, the Kaiser Craft roses, and they are such a delight, these. They're very, very delicate, but the petals are individual. You are able to um, move them around a little bit and manipulate them to, the sh to show their best. I will then pop some glue on the back of that and place it over the knot in the ribbon. I'll just put that out of the way and I don't really want to have that dripping everywhere and there is your completed card and I think for anybody who received this it would be very very well received obviously I've worked very quickly I've got a little bit of the collal glue here and I might have to find something just to cover that up um, you would not, needless to say, take a lot more time with it, but it is open to variation. You can change the ribbon, you can change whatever you decide to decorate the card with, you can change the sentiment, but essentially that is a very easy, pretty card that I'm sure anyone would be more than happy to receive. So I'll leave that there with you. A couple of things that I need to tell you before I leave you. As with the first series from Handy Hippo, there is a giveaway at the end of this 10 week series and it will again be a £20 gift voucher for the Handy Hippo site. This is open to anyone in the EU um, but this time you actually do have to be subscribed to the Handy Hippo channel um, and that then will afford you immediate entry to this little giveaway. The words that you're looking for this time, last time it was a sentence, this time it's British favourite food. So that will be displayed at some point throughout the video for one minute to give you time to pick it up and make note of it and at the end of the 10 week session there will be 10 items of food or meals that you need to send to Edie Jane Clark who is the instigator and organizer of this series and I'd like to thank you to Jane again for having the faith to give me this area to play in and I hope you've enjoyed this first session. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.